Yeah, I've often talked about, I can just see out the window as I look out, I can see this uh, very large tree with the trunk and then the main branches coming out of it and then the branches getting smaller and all the green leaves on it. It's very much like consciousness that, um, that, um, that does seem to be a very good question. Like if there is like a taproot where there was a way, if the, if the tree represented consciousness and you were told that the tree isn't real and that you ultimately have to just release the whole tree, the wise thing would be to get a big chainsaw <laughs> and go right down to the base of the tree and say, alright, we can, we can handle that. Let's just get a crew in here and let's get maybe a little bit, a, a lot of extra work, but let's get a very big, powerful, maybe a set of chainsaws and let's go right in for it right there. Um, but that, that does relate to the, like the psychotherapy thing. It would be, it would be like a, ther a client going into a psychotherapist and saying, you see I've got this self-concept, I, I believe I, I substituted a, a world and a whole cosmos, a big bang in place of God, and that was a big mistake. Uh, but I, I'm here uh, to have you completely have me un expose, unveil, and dismantle the entire cosmos. Uh, how much do you charge an hour? You know, uh, but it, which most people don't, that's not their presenting problem. Uh, they, they, you know, they don't want you to, to take, can you help me with the disappearance of the universe? Uh, how much do you charge per hour? But that's just not there. So, practically speaking, most of the times people start off with the leaves and then the, the smaller branches and, and generally you'll find that that's what all practical kind of spiritualities, um, even Jesus, that's why he told all those parables. He was using terminology for mind and consciousness even before their, Freud had invented the words about, you know, defense mechanisms and all the words that he uses in A Course in Miracles, just a lot of them weren't invented. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to go through the Aramaic <laughs> study and say, what was even available <laughs> back then? I think he did a really good job kind of pointing to it with the words that were available, but now we have a lot more words to use and it seems that that's part of that course. So. Um, it is, I think, a matter of willingness that, that for some, they, they come through the trees and the branches and they get to the trunk much faster than others, seemingly. And I think it's, it's really a matter of desire. Uh, that's, what, that's what gets you down, that's what traces it down to the core and bring, it gets you to that decision point faster. In fact, in the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost by your desire for something else. So when he gave me the concentric circles, guess what was bullseye, right in the very center. That's, that's heavy, pretty heavy words. Truth, not, you know, anything. Truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire. So I would say that seems to be part of the unwinding and, and coming down from the leaves and the branches more towards the trunk. <coughs> and then it starts, the closer you get to the trunk, the more intense it gets. Uh, that's where you read books like St. John of the Cross, Dark Night of the Soul. When you start getting down close to the trunk, that's when the ego, it doesn't sometimes go from suspicious to vicious. Suspicious is reserved for the leaves and the twigs. Uh, when you start to get down near the trunk, and which is unplugging from it and, and its whole perceived existence and, and so forth, that's when everything gets more and more intense. Intense rage, intense enormous fear, intense fear of, of loss of control, abandonment, so on and so forth. It gets more and more intense and it gets more non-specific. When you're up playing with the leaves, and the twigs, it's all very specific. You know, you think, you know, that's, uh, I, I, if I ever see that, you know, it's like you can think of, you've got their names, you've got the memories, 
and you are really got some real specific thing. I will never forgive, but never forget. I will never forget when, you know, da da da. But once you get down towards the trunk, it's just this intensity, and it's very non-specific. Like, you could be just sitting on a couch, meditating, and then this intense rage comes up, and you look around and you go, what triggered that? <laughs> you know, the little leaves falling off and dropping down here, <laughs> <laughs> ruining my environment, clean it up. <laughs> you know, you can just rage and rage, but, but it's like, that's how it gets, you know, when you start to get down there closer to the plug, of course the ego is like, it doesn't want its whole seeming existence unplugged. So that's where it's, it's really good. I mean, even at that point, even if you have mighty companions around you, the ego will try to project <laughs> on the mighty companions. You know, get out of my face! I'm, I'm going through rage here. You know, that's how it gets when you get down there. Because, because it's, just, it's just the way that it seems to be in the approach. And then when you finally get down to the core, to the decision point, it's more like that little Buddha movie I mentioned last night. It's just, there's no flaming arrows at all. It's just all like petals, like rose petals and orchids and lilies. And it's just all beautiful. But in approaching that, that's the way that it just seems to go. And, and you know, is there like a tap root? You know, I, I did many years ago, uh, before 9-11, <laughs> Back in the 1990s, I talked about the Twin Towers. I was constantly going around. The Holy Spirit was using the Twin Towers parable. And the Holy Spirit was saying that, that there is like a master switch uh, in the basement of the Twin Towers. Because I was using the Twin Towers, you know, so many floors, New York City and everything. And, and if you get down to the master switch, then the towers will, will light up. <laughs> the towers will completely light up and be gone. And, and that was a parable that was pulled back in the 1990s. It was interesting, after the Twin Towers did come down, uh, some people were finding like, oh, I was reading in my study group this little pamphlet that you had, it was called Mind Overhaul or something like that, and, or Purposes and Only Choice, one of them, and, and they said, I was reading about the Twin Towers coming down. <laughs> When did you write this thing? <laughs> it was back in the 1990s. But that was a kind of another example of the master switch does get down to cause and effect. And oftentimes I talk about hypotheticals and time being simultaneous instead of linear. And that's, that's really the taproot. It seems like with that metaphor that when you're not really ready to get to the tap root, then it seems like you're going through the individual rooms and you're turning the light switch on in all the darkened rooms, room by room by room. And with the Twin Towers, it's a lot of rooms. But the master switch has to do with causation. And um, I think online and in various times I've put up this, this talk that I did with a group of people called Reversing Cause and Effect. And one of my students years ago, Jeffrey Lake, he, he, I think he read through that like six times before he started to have the light bulb going off. Like his, his eyes would move across it, and he would read it, and then he would go, no, I don't get it. And he would go through it again, and read the dialogue again, and it was like six times before there was a boing, like a light bulb going off. Because the master switch, the tap root, is heavily guarded. You know, just imagine if, if, if the mind, the seed mind is filled with systems and systems of defense mechanisms, then the master switch is, the, is going to end the whole charade. It's heavily guarded by the ego. Talk about Fort Knox and a fortress. You ain't seen nothing until you've seen how this is guarded. Some of you watched The Matrix, The Key Maker, you know, and they're saying, there is a door, but the door can only be opened by the one. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> there's, a, 
Bingo has made sure that door is not going to be opened by a human being, because the whole construct would, would disappear, and all human beings in the whole world would, would be retranslated into love, into a forgiven world. So, there is a taproot, but it's, it's just, it's, if you really want to kind of go for the taproot, we have a little teeny booklet. Do we st still have that with us out there? Purpose is the only choice. Do we have one of those? It's, it's very tiny. It's one of those that you can, you take off to your hermitage. Of course, Eric's been through that so many times. He's, <laughs> he's like, he's beyond the, beyond the little book. Yeah, this, this could be subtitled, it could be called Purpose is the Only Choice, Finding the Taproot. <laughs> And look how small it is, isn't it? Have all those books. That's the it is. It's funny. But now, and here you are asking for the taproot. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I just popped it open, it, it just, I read the first word, it was stop! <laughs> Exclamation point. That's the first <laughs> word out of the whole book. But it caught my... Yeah, let's see what it says. Who <laughs> wrote <laughs> <laughs> it? So the key is to follow the cord down to the plug, purpose, and unplug it. But if one is holding on to a belief system of linear time, of bodies, nature, and all the things of this world, then as one starts to go down, the ego shouts, STOP! Exclamation point, in italics. You don't want to do this. You'll be left with nothing! Exclamation point. No identity! Exclamation point. And if the ego still seems to have value, if it still seems to give you something that you think you want and need, the mind will halt the search for the plug. <coughs> will halt the search for the plug. Will say, no, there's certain things I would not like to question. Yeah. Not, I don't want to question that, I just want to accept it. Uh, some of you saw the Matrix movie, Cypher, you know, he, he wanted to halt the search for the plug. He, he says, put me back in the matrix, you know, get me plugged in again. I want to be something, an actor. And oh, the agent goes, okay, Mr. Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Apropos for California. <laughs> so, uh, it says, ironically, in its attempt to handle the loud noise of the blender, the deceived mind will retain defense mechanisms and distractions on the surface, the projected world. Following the cord down, in this analogy, is the same as tracing upsets from specifics to the false belief that produced them, or becoming clear on the distinction between form and content. Once this is clear, once one is able to discern what comes from God and what doesn't, what is true and what is false, and thus realize that only the truth is true and there is nothing to decide until that realization is reached. Purpose mm. is the only choice. Mm. Oh, out of the whole thing, I just picked the, <laughs> the paragraph with the title in it. <laughs> but that's like a key thing. So that's, that's really is, it's where Tara's question started about you know, questioning and inquiry, and really, that's really the taproot, that's what the goal is.